Today, I will introduce ACL to you. ACL refers to Access Control List, and ACL consists of a set of rules that describe the packet matching conditions. These conditions can be source addresses, destination addresses, and port numbers from packets. The ACL is like a packet filter that filters packets according to service requirements based on packet characteristics. Using the packet filtering technique, we can block attack packets, provide differentiated service for different packet flows, and control the telnet login and FTP file downloading operations. This way, we can improve network security and transmission reliability. Now, let's look at a figure to understand what an ACL looks like. Each ACL has a number through which you can distinguish the ACL type. You can use the rule commands to set a series of rules for an ACL. These rules are the packet matching conditions. Each rule has an ID and contains a permit or deny action. Following the rule ID is the packet matching condition. Different types of ACL can have different condition combinations. As shown in the figure, ACLs are classified into Basic, Advanced, Layer 2, User Defined, and User ACLs. Each ACL has a specified ACL number range. For example, ACLs 2000 to 2999 are basic ACLs. Basic ACLs use source IP addresses as the packet matching condition. ACLs 3000 to 3999 are advanced ACLs. These advanced ACLs use source IP addresses, destination IP addresses, and TCP UDP port numbers as the packet matching conditions. The other types of ACLs are not described here. You can configure different types of ACLs according to your needs. When configuring ACL rules, you can set time ranges for the rules. Then, the rules take effect only in the specified time ranges. If the time ranges are not specified, the rules are effective all the time. Next, let's see how packets match the ACL rules. By default, the system matches packets against ACL rules in the ascending order of rule IDs. That is, the rule with the smallest ID number is processed first. The ACL matching results include positive match and negative match. Positive match. Packets match a rule in an ACL, no matter whether the action is permit or deny. Negative match. No ACL exists, the ACL does not contain rules, or packets do not match any rule in an ACL. Whether the packets are discarded or forwarded is determined by the service module to which the ACL is applied. No matter whether the packets do not match an ACL, match the permit rule, or match the deny rule. Different service modules process the packets that match and do not match ACL rules in different ways. Next, let's have a look at the ACL application. The ACL just classifies packets. To use an ACL to control network access or restrict traffic volume, you must apply the ACL to a service. An ACL can be applied to the following services. First, login control. The device controls user access permission. Only authorized users can log into the device, ensuring network security. Second, filtering forwarded packets. The switch filters received packets and then discards, modifies, prioritizes, redirects, and performs IPsec protection on the filtered packets. Third, filtering the packets to be sent to a CPU. If too many protocol packets are sent to the CPU, the CPU usage increases and CPU performance degrades. The device can use an ACL to restrict packets to be sent to the CPU. Fourth, filtering routes. An ACL can be applied to various dynamic routing protocols to filter advertised and received routes. As mentioned before, Different service modules process the packets that match and do not match ACL rules in different ways. For example, 
If an ACL applied to a traffic policy contains rules, but packets do not match these rules, the packets are forwarded. However, if the same ACL is applied to the Telnet service, such packets are discarded. Therefore, you must be familiar with the packet processing mechanism of a service module before applying an ACL to it. Now, I'll show you how the traffic policy module processes packets. If a packet matches the permit rule in an ACL, whether the packet is forwarded or discarded depends on the traffic policy configuration. If the traffic behavior in the traffic policy is permit, the packet is forwarded. If the traffic behavior in the traffic policy is deny, the packet is discarded. If a packet matches the deny rule in an ACL, the packet is discarded. If a pack does not match any ACL rule, the packet is forwarded without being affected by an ACL. There are three situations for the packet not matching an ACL. Either no ACL exists, the ACL does not contain rules, or packets do not match any rule in an ACL. Here's an example showing how to configure an ACL to prevent access between hosts on an internal network. The departments of an enterprise are connected through a switch. The hosts of the R&D department are located on VLAN 10, and the network segment is on 10.1.1.0-24. The hosts of the marketing department are located on VLAN 20. The network segment is 10.1.2.0-24. The two network segments are not allowed to access each other to ensure the enterprise's information security. The configuration roadmap is as follows. Configure an advanced ACL and ACL-based traffic classifier to filter the packets exchanged between the R&D and marketing departments. Configure a traffic behavior to discard the packets matching the ACL. Configure and apply a traffic policy to make the ACL and traffic behavior take effect. Next, let's look at the configuration procedure. First of all, enter the system view to create VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. Set the GE001 link type on the switch to trunk and configure the interface to allow VLAN 10 packets to pass. Set the GE002 link type on the switch to trunk and configure the interface to allow VLAN 10 packets to pass. Assign IP address 10.1.1.1 to VLAN IF10 and assign IP address 10.1.2.1 to VLAN IF20. Create ACL3001 and enter the system view. Configure an ACL rule to discard the packets from the R&D department to the marketing department. These packets are from IP address segment 10.1.1.0 and destined for IP address segment 10.1.2.0. Then return to the system view. After that, create ACL3002 and enter the ACL view. Configure an ACL rule to discard the packets from the marketing department to the R&D department. These packets are from IP address segment 10.1.2.0 and destined for IP address segment 10.1.1.0. After that, return to the system view. Configure the traffic classifier TC1 to classify packets that match ACLs 3001 and 3002. Return to the system view. Configure the traffic behavior TV1 to discard packets. Return to the system view. Configure the traffic policy TP1 in which the traffic classifier TC1 is associated with traffic behavior TB1. Then return to the system view. Lastly, apply the traffic policy to the GE001 and GE002 inbound direction. 
Now, let's look at the command line configuration. Enter the system view to create VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. Enter the GE001 interface view, set the link type to trunk, and allow the packets from VLAN 10 to pass. Return to the system view. Enter the GE002 interface view, set the link type to trunk, and allow the packets from VLAN 20 to pass. Return to the system view. Enter the VLAN IF10 interface view and assign IP address 10.1.1.1 to the interface. Return to the system view. Enter the VLAN IF20 interface view and assign IP address 10.1.2.1 to the interface. Return to the system view. Create Advanced ACL3001 and enter the view screen. Configure an ACL rule to discard the packets from the R&D department to the marketing department. Return to the system view. Create Advanced ACL3002 and enter its view. Configure an ACL rule to discard the packets from the marketing department to the R&D department. Return to the system view. Configure the traffic classifier TC1 to classify packets that match ACLs 3001 and 3002. Return to the system view. Configure the traffic behavior TB1 to discard packets. Return to the system view. Configure the traffic policy TP1 to associate the traffic classifier with traffic behavior. Return to the system view. Enter GE001 interface view. Apply the traffic policy TP1 to the inbound direction of the interface. Return to the system view. Enter GE002 interface view. Apply the traffic policy TP1 to the inbound direction of the interface. Return to the system view. Now, run the display ACL command to view configured ACL rules. Run display commands to view traffic classifier and traffic policy configurations. The network segment where the R&D department and the marketing departments reside cannot access each other. To obtain more information about common configurations and typical features of Huawei switches, see the All About Switches threads. Where do you find these threads? Using Google search, type in All About Switches site colon Huawei.com in the search field and click any of the displayed links to enter the Huawei Enterprise Support Community.
For details about more features, visit the home page. The All About Switches threads describes typical configurations and users' questions about Huawei switches. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for listening, and goodbye.